Hello everybody, this is Abule and welcome to Black American Lineage. And today I want to give a really good example of what I mean when I say intellectual theft, the stealing of a black American's image and placing it on a white man. This handsome specimen of a black American man is named Bass Reeves. And he is a good looking guy too. He looks like we expect a black American man to look. I am never surprised when a black American man is handsome. I'm always surprised when he's not handsome. But this man is one of the reasons that we celebrate black American history because it is really important to document and give people credit for what they do. Bass Reeves was a formerly enslaved man turned American law enforcement officer and he was among the first black deputy U.S. Marshals. He was one of the marshals west of the Mississippi River and he worked mostly in Arkansas and the Oklahoma Territory. Bass Reeves was born into slavery in Crawford County, Arkansas in 1838. He was named after his grandfather, Bass Washington. Bass Reeves' family was owned by Arkansas State Legislator William Steele Reeves. When Bass was about eight years old in 1846, William Reeves moved to Grayson County, Texas, bringing the enslaved people with him. It is reported that William Steele Reeves kept some of Bass Reeves' family members enslaved up until 1882. We know that slavery ended in 1865, but those enslaved people was their livelihood. And so they were trying to hold on to them as long as they could. After slavery ended in 1865, after about 12 years of Reconstruction, the United States government allowed the South to re-enslave those people for another 90, almost another 100 years. When the Civil War began, George Reeves joined the Confederate Army, forcing Bass to go with him. It is unclear how and exactly when, but Bass Reeves escaped from George Reeves. In other words, he escaped from slavery. Now, on January 1st, 1863, Bass Reeves' family would have been freed under the Emancipation Proclamation because they lived in Texas, a state that was in opposition to the United States government. So Texas joined the Confederacy. So if you were a slave in a Confederate state, the Emancipation Proclamation freed you. So he left and it's reported that he moved into Indian Territory in Oklahoma, between Oklahoma and Arkansas, and stayed for many years, learning the languages of the different tribes. As a free man, Bass Reeves returned to Arkansas and began farming. So Bass Reeves became a farmer. But this is where it gets interesting because after the Civil War, America was in free fall. It was almost a lawless country. You had the Southerners who had lost their enslaved people. They were angry. And then you had the Northerners who many of them were just immigrants and new to the country. They didn't have any money because the wealth was in the South. So this lawless, almost ungovernable country gave rise to the outlaws. We all know about the outlaws of the wild, wild west. And some of us grew up watching those westerns on television where criminals, also known as outlaws, were running amok all over the country. There was Jesse and Frank James, Billy the Kid, Butch Cassidy, and Belle Starr, who was a woman and a member of the notorious James Younger gang. These gangs had America at a standstill. They were going all over the country, robbing banks, robbing trains, murdering, stealing horses, breaking in, entering. They were just outlaws. And need I say it? They were white. And they had taken on the country. So federal judges had to start appointing federal marshals to go out west, because a lot of this was taking place out west, go out west and bring the west under control, to bring the wild, wild west under control. Bass Reeves 
was one of the first black men to be appointed a federal marshal. Now, you know, in order for a black man to be appointed a federal marshal walking around with a gun, it had to be dangerous and it had to be something that only the most daring of white men would do. Most of them didn't want to do it. So Bass Reeves got this opportunity to be a lawman because it was dangerous. And that was the beginning of bringing the West under control. They called it the Wild Wild West for a reason. It was really wild. And those federal marshals had to shoot it out with those gunslingers because they weren't playing. So when we watch Gunsmoke with Matt Dillon, he was a U.S. Marshal. And he was authorized to go all over the country, really bringing criminals to justice. Well, Matt Dillon was a fictional character, but Bass Reeves was the real thing. He was really a real life federal marshal who brought the bad guys to justice. In 1875, he was assigned as a U.S. Marshal for the Western District of Arkansas, which had responsibility also for the Native Reservation Territory. So in 1875, they were still fighting the Native Americans. So that's how come they wanted to put him out there. He had lived among them and understood their languages and had a relationship with them. So they put him out there with the Native tribes because it was dangerous for a white person to go out there. So Bass Reeves served most of his 32 years as a federal marshal, in the Oklahoma Territory, Arkansas, and Texas, where the fighting with the indigenous people was still going on. It may surprise many to know that the last war between the United States government and the indigenous people was in 1924. That hasn't even been a hundred years. So the Indian Wars went on for a long time. And remember, they had removed all of the Indians in the East and even from down here in the South in the Trail of Tears and had moved them out west. So they were out there, but they were still trying to fight for their land. So the U.S. military was fighting the Indians or the natives and the lawmen, the sheriffs, the deputies, and the federal marshals were fighting the outlaws. So let's get down to why Bass Reeves is a hero. He worked for 32 years as a federal peace officer in the Indian Territory and became one of the most valued deputies. He brought in some of the most dangerous fugitives of the time. We knew that would be the case. We knew they would be sending him after the dangerous ones. He was never wounded, even though they said he had his hat shot off and his belt shot off on different occasions. But in all of that, he was never wounded. So it sounds like he was outsmarting the crooks. Bass Reeves was a marksman with a rifle and a revolver, which means he was faster than everybody else. In addition to being smarter, he was also quicker on the draw. When you see those federal marshals on TV like Matt Dillon and Wyatt Earp, that movie will never end without them having a gunfight where the federal marshal is always the fastest. I'll bet they got that from Bass Reeves. He was an outstanding lawman and developed superior detective skills. It's recorded that Bass Reeves had to arrest his own son for killing his wife. I'm not sure that I believe this, but that is what they say. Bass Reeves was married twice. His first wife died. He remarried and he was the father of 11 children. He was an outstanding lawman and made a great contribution to the nation as well as adding to the legacy of black Americans. He leaves behind a large body of work as well as an impressive legacy. He is memorialized in television, movies, books, and all kinds of media. A statue is dedicated to Bass Reeves in Fort Smith, Arkansas. In 2011, the U.S. 62 bridge, which spans the Arkansas River between Muskogee and Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, was renamed the Bass Reeves Memorial Bridge. In May 2012, a bronze statue of Bass Reeves was erected in Pendergraph Park in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And in 2013, he was inducted into the Texas Trail of Fame. 
So he has an impressive legacy. Bass Reeves' name continues to live. Now here is where the intellectual theft comes in. The Long Ranger was an American television show that ran from 1949 to 1957. It was about a lawman out west with a Native American partner solving crimes following the same pattern of Bass Reeves. The Long Ranger has been revealed to be Bass Reeves. But they took the work ethic, the gift, and the glory of a black man and gave it to a white man. This is intellectual and I would even call it identity theft. Because America hates the idea of a black person being the best at anything. They took some, a real, what a real black man did, made a TV show out of it, and turned him into a white man with a mask on. But the truth has a way of coming to the light. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Whatever white people in America do, they will write it down. They wrote it down. They had a picture of him. So it was only going to stay buried for so long. And now, in 2023, the Nigerian actor, David Oyelo, or however his name is pronounced, is doing a series on the legendary lawman, Bass Reeves. And these two actresses are playing his two wives. So we can look forward to seeing this on Paramount Plus if you like. And this time there's actually a black man playing Bass Reeves. And I won't say anything about David Oyelowo because we don't dislike him. He, he, you know, he doesn't come over here insulting people. So he's okay. And it's good that the world sees our legacy. Slavery was a really, really horrible part of our journey here in the United States. But slavery, with all of its horrors is not the whole story. We have a very rich history and a very rich culture. So it's good for the world to see the other side of black American culture and history. But anyway, this is Bass Reeves and this is one of our great iconic ancestors. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about it. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video, and as always, have a great day.